Hello guys, it's Phil Martinez back with another reaction video, and today I'm going to be reacting to Mr. Nightmare again called Four Deserving True Playground Horror Stories. This one sounds a little interesting, and it might be scary, so if it, any of this bothers you, I would click off right now. But if you stay on, you've been warned. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, the creepy is already scary enough. Oh god, I'm... Okay, story one. When I was 17 in my last year of high school, I was finally starting to hit things off with a girl I liked. I'll call her Lynn. Lynn was a big pot smoker. At the time, it really wasn't my thing, but I went along with it just because. I live a couple blocks from her, so I always walked before I got a car. Across the street from her house is a park. Commonly at night, she'd instant message me on AOL to come hang out at the park. Sometimes we'd just sit on the playground at night and talk for hours. Sometimes she'd convince me to smoke with her. It was always such a private place to hang out and talk, especially at night. A line of thick trees surrounded the playground as well, creating a wall of sorts. Well, one night we both snuck out around 12 and met at the playground in the park. We talked for a while. Then Lynn perked up, playfully hit me on the shoulder, and said, We should play hide and seek. It may sound oh, immature God. for a couple seniors in high school to play hide and seek, but it just seemed like it would be it fun. It sounds like you might, it might be she fun when you're a little grown up. And count to 30. When I was done, my first instinct was, of course, to check the playground. And if she wasn't there, I'd move on to the picnic bench area. We always had flashlights on us when we went to the park, because this was before everyone had phones with flashlights in their pockets. I stepped from the grass onto the wood fiber mulch surrounding the playground. I aimed my flashlight up to the playground, because I guess I was too lazy to go up there if I didn't have to. You know those big plastic circular things with a bunch of tiny holes in it that a lot of playgrounds have? Yeah. Maybe not. But there was one of those things up at the highest level of the playgrounds, and through a bunch of holes, I could see what appeared to be skin and a jacket, but what stood out the most was her eye peering through one of the holes. Instead of going up there right away, I decided it would be fun to kind of mess with her. I waved the flashlight around the playground, pretending like I didn't see her. I was going to walk to the picnic area, turn on the flashlight, walk around to the trees, back to the playground, Sneak up on her and scare the living daylight out of her. Don't ask me why, I just wanted to. <laughs> I walked to the picnic area, shut off the flashlight, and snuck back over to the playground. I was careful not to make noise as I crept through the wood chips that the playground sat on. Before I could even step foot on the first platform of the playground, something grabbed my arm and pulled me. <gasps> I actually screamed, but stopped when I heard Lynn's laughter. I turned on the flashlight and was relieved to see it was her. The prank obviously backfired completely. After that, we went oh, back up to the second level platform of the playground that we always chilled in. I asked her if she knew that I saw her behind that plastic thing at the top of the playground, but she was confused. She acted as huh? if she never went up there. I explained to her that I saw someone up there. We both looked up as the tiny creaking sounds we had been hearing every so often suddenly made a disturbing amount of sense. I aimed the light up there, which revealed someone's head hunched over the railing of the platform above us. At the same time, we heard footsteps kicking the wood chips around right below the platform oh we were sitting on. I made the first move for us to run, and Lynn followed suit. I turned out my flashlight while we ran, which wasn't long since Lynn's house was right across the street. We went to her room, shut the curtains, and I stayed there for the night, not wanting to go home. Oh my that gosh. That marked the end of our late night visits to the park. That That's weird. Okay, story two. Do you have any memories from when you were a little kid that just make you uncomfortable to think about? Oh Especially yeah, Especially since the you were time. so young at the time that you didn't know any better? Oh yeah, well, absolutely. This is mine. My mom used to take me to this really big playground in my town. And when I say really big, I'm not exaggerating. 
It was probably the biggest playground you'd ever see. If only I knew the name of it. The playground was entirely wooden, and every Saturday and Sunday there would be at least 50 kids playing across it, with the parents all tucked away in the shaded area reading their magazines and whatnot. One typical busy day at the playgrounds, I was running along a big open platform when an older woman stopped me and said hi. She kept going on and on about how cute I was, and how she loved my blonde hair. It started to seem like she knew me based off the way she was talking to me. Hmm. And then she told me that my mom left and that she told her to take me home. Oh, Keep no. in mind I was only six, so I believed her. The woman took me to the parking lot, to an old station wagon where a man, I now presume to be her husband, was sitting in the driver's seat. He acted all friendly to me as the woman motioned me into the back seat, but I remember him yelling and lecturing at her about something. The man drove very aggressively and quickly as he was leaving the parking lot. We came to the this light at the exit of the park. It was red. Just then a car pulled up behind us and laid on the horn. I looked behind us, and it was my mom's car. The man blew through the red light, which even I picked up on, and started flooring it down the streets. I started to cry and scream as I realized my mom didn't know these people. Not long after, the man pulled the car over and yelled at the top of his lungs at me to get out of the car. Well, I opened the door, still crying my eyes out in fear. My mom pulled up next to me, ran out of the car, and hugged me. In the heat of the moment, she didn't get the tag number, nor was she able to call the police since this was 2001, and there were no cell phones. I really wish I didn't remember this day so clearly. I would have rather it just been one of those memories that the brain chooses to repress. This is basically a kidnapping man, oh my gosh. Can you imagine if that was you? Wow. Okay, story three. Only two more to go. I'm a single father currently living with my five-year-old son. I have an old wooden playground in my backyard. It has a tire swing, monkey bars, and a big slide. A couple times recently, I've heard noises coming from the playground at night. I'll start from the first night. I woke up one night last week to the sound of something squeaking from outside. I recognized it to be the sound of the rusty chain of the tire swing spinning around. I also heard a young child's laughter out there. I thought it was my son, so I went to his room to find him in his bed fast asleep. My heart dropped as I saw him in his bed. That meant some stranger was in my yard. Oh god. But when I opened the back door to the backyard, there was no one back there. The tire swing was spinning slowly, however, as if somebody had just gotten off of it. I chalked it up as some kid just sneaking into my yard and went back to sleep. The next night, however, I woke up again to the sound of someone stomping up and down the slide, once again accompanied by the sound of a child's laughter. I checked my son's room once again to find him in bed. This time I thought I'd be a little smarter about it and check the window first before going outside. Nothing was out there though. Not on the playground at least. I still went outside anyway just to make sure. For a couple nights nothing happened and I completely forgot about it. But on the third night, while in bed, a knock at my window startled me. Oh god, that scared the heck out of me. I sat up in shock for a good minute, afraid to look outside but eventually I was brave enough to do so. I looked out the foggy window. Through the smudge, I could see both the swings on the swing set swinging lightly, accompanied with the laughter of a child again. I ran as fast as I could down those stairs and out the back door, but instead of finding a couple of deviant little kids back there, instead I saw some towering figure looming at the top of my playground, surely looking at me. My courage turned to pure cowardice as I turned to run back inside, lock the door, and dial 911. The wait for an officer to arrive was the longest 20 minutes I'd ever experienced. By the time they got there though, the figure on the playground was gone. They took down what little information I could give them and left. I wish I could say that was the last occurrence, but just last night, there was another knock at my window. I simply ignored it this time though. I'm dreading going to sleep tonight.
I think I'm going to install security cameras on my house soon. Yeah, that's probably a good Either idea. Way, I'll give an update on what happens. I'm, I'm literally getting goosebumps right now. This is creeping the heck out of me. This is story number four. I was 13 years old. My bedroom window faced the playground outside. It was a hot spring night with a light rain. What the heck so is I had that? the window open, allowing me to hear what the raindrops. That? As well as a strange squeaking sound. It really started to get annoying, so I went to the window to see what it could be. There was someone sitting on the swing set. I nearly screamed, but covered my mouth instead. What was really scary was that the swing was in the direct line of sight from my window, and the person on the swing was staring straight at my window. I could only hope they didn't see me. I was too scared to go across the house to my parents' room. Instead, all I really wanted to do was hide in my bed and hope they would go away. But the squeaking went on and on. I covered my ears not only because I was scared, but also because of the annoyance of the sound. And finally, at last, the squeaking stopped. I gave it a few seconds before I quietly got out from bed and went back to the window. This time, I actually screamed. The person oh God. who was previously on the swing was now standing at most 10 feet from my window, looking in. Close enough for me to make out his horrid face, with his eyes locked onto mine. But only for maybe a second or two, because I went straight to my parents' room, screaming for my dad the whole way. My dad looked out the window, then went outside. He came back in five minutes later and said there were boot marks under the swings where a patch of mud accumulated, but he couldn't find the person who made them. This was 100% the scariest moment of my life. Ah, uh, stop, stop with the squeaking. I'm having trouble connecting to the internet. Oh shoot. Wow, well, there you guys go, Mr. Nightmare. Oh god, that, that was scary as heck. Wow, and these are true stories too, and these creep me out so much. I I literally I literally have goosebumps all over me right now. Um, listen, don't watch this at night because this will, um, this will give you nightmares. <laughs> and it's twelve o'clock right now where I am right now. So that means I'm probably actually going to go to bed soon, so it's going to be hard because <laughs> I just literally watched a horror story video. So uh, I'm just going to end it here. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to click on another video here. Click that circle to subscribe and click the notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. Alright you guys, I'm going to go and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.